Welcome back to Pattern Recognition. So today we want to start talking a little bit about optimization and we'll have a couple of refresher elements in case you don't know that much about different ideas on optimization and you will see that they're actually fairly simple and they will turn out to be quite useful for your further work in pattern recognition. So today's topic is optimization and of course this is crucial for many things in pattern recognition so you want to find solutions of complex objective functions and this is a problem that arises in pattern analysis, machine learning, artificial intelligence and the like. So optimization also has many faces. There's discrete optimization, there's combinatorial optimization, genetic algorithms, gradient descent, unconstrained and constrained optimization, linear programming and convex optimization and so on. So here we essentially need some basic knowledge on optimization such that you are able to follow the remaining lecture. And this is why we want to talk about a couple of ideas how to optimize. And of course, everybody has typically his or her own favorite algorithm and therefore we will show some of the ideas and in particular what we will focus on in this class is the optimization of problems that are convex. So here you see the formal definition of convexity, a function, probably a high dimensional one of dimension d that is projected onto a scalar value is convex if the domain of f is a convex set and if for all points x, y within this domain and theta between 0 and 1, we have the following relation. And here you can see that we have f of theta x plus 1 minus theta y. So you can essentially see this is a linear interpolation between x and y. So if you're moving in the input space from x to y, then all of the points on the function will fulfill the property that if you interpolate linearly between f of x and f of y, so here we use the same notation, so it's theta f of x plus 1 minus theta f of y, so this is again a linear interpolation in the output domain, and this will always be greater than the interpolation along the original function. So you can also see that a function is concave if minus f is convex, and if we look in this in a kind of geometric interpretation, we can say that the line segment that lies on x f of x and y f of y lies above the graph of f. If you can connect any two points on the graph with a line and this lies above the graph of f, you have a convex function. A very typical example is a parabola. Let's look a bit into unconstrained optimization. So here we generally assume that we have some function from rd to r that is twice differentiable. Now the unconstrained problem is just the solution of the minimization problem x star equals to the minimum over f of x and here x star is the optimal point. If we have this particular set of functions, meaning convex functions, a necessary and sufficient condition for the minimum are the zero crossings of the function's gradient. So if you have a convex function and you find a position where f of x star and the gradient at this position is zero, then you must have a minimum. And the great thing is that if you have a convex function and you seek to find the minimum, then following the negative gradient direction will eventually bring you there. So this is already a very nice thing and also by the way you will find a global minimum in a convex function. Yeah, so the convex function has only one global minimum.
So the gradient descent methods here will always result in global minima, which is also very nice in terms of the optimization, because that essentially means you are not really dependent on the initialization. It doesn't matter where you start, the gradients will always lead you to the global minimum. Now, most methods in this unconstrained optimization follow this iterative scheme and you initialize somewhere with some x0 that you can choose randomly essentially or you have a fixed value and then you do iteration steps and you produce a new xk plus 1 of the old xk given some function g and g is the update function. So there are different versions of implementing G. One could be just following the negative gradient direction. Another one could be shrinkage functions. So these are functions that allow you to produce a smaller function value for a given input of X. Now, the iterations terminate if we only have small change, meaning that the difference between X K plus one and X, this is small, below a threshold that we introduce here as epsilon, so there is no further significant change. Now let's consider a very simple update scheme. I already hinted at that. We choose the update function to be the old position plus some step size tk times delta x of k, and here delta x of k is the search direction in the kth iteration, and tk denotes the step length in the kth iteration. Now we would expect that if we find a better position for xk plus 1, then of course the function value of f of xk plus 1 will be lower than the function value of f of xk, and therewith also the inner product of the gradient with our update direction should be negative. So this should be a value that is below zero. And of course, this will be generally the case unless we have x of k plus one equals to xk equals to the optimum x star. Also one thing that you want to keep in mind, for many problems, it's always good to know the second order Taylor approximation. And here we introduce the Taylor approximation for our twice differentiable function. So you can see that I can approximate f of x plus t times delta x can be approximated as f of x plus t times the gradient of x in a product with the step direction, the update direction delta x plus 1 over 2 t squared times now the inner product of our update direction with the Hessian times the update direction. So this is an approximation of the actual step size into this direction and this is also very commonly used in second order methods. Now let's start with some simpler idea. We want to talk about descent methods and here we want to have an initial estimate x0 and we have some function f. Then we initialize with k equals to zero and now we select or compute the descent direction. In a simple case, we can just take the negative gradient direction but we will see there's also more sophisticated ways of choosing this. So this is why we have this general form using this delta x. Then we do a line search, which is essentially a 1D optimization. And there we choose essentially the optimal step size t. So we determine tk as the minimum over f of xk plus t times delta xk. So this will allow us to get the minimum in the search direction. And then we update accordingly with the optimal step size tk times delta x. And we add that to our old position xk. Then we increase our iteration counter and we do repeat this until we only have very small difference between the previous and the new iteration. So this lies then below some threshold epsilon and we can return our xk. Now let's talk a bit about the line search. The line search is 
typically conducted in multivariate optimization where you have a high dimensional problem where you want to work on and then you need a proper search method. So one thing that you could do is of course an exact line search where you then try to solve essentially really this minimization problem. It's only a one dimensional problem, but probably it would involve many accesses to the actual function value. So you would have to really try to find the minimum of a T and therefore this is rarely used. There's a couple of different choices for this line search method and there's a very good book called Numerical Recipes. And if you look into Numerical Recipes, by the way, it also comes with implementation. So it also has code examples and so on. So Numerical Recipes is a really good book if you want to get into coding of optimization and it's available in different programming languages. So let's look into the simple idea of having a fixed step size. If you do that, and here we choose our step size as 0 0.25, then you can see we follow the negative gradient direction here and we converge after a couple of steps very nicely to our global minimum of this parabola here. So this works fairly well, but remember this step size is also dependent on your problem. So you may want to choose different step sizes in different problems. And we can show this here. We take the same problem, but now we take a step size of 1.9. And if you take 1.9, you see we start at the point here on the top right. And yeah, the first thing that happens is we jump all the way to over here. So our step size is too large. And then we step back. Uh, because we follow again the negative gradient direction. This is now showing in the opposite direction, which means that we essentially end up on the other side of the parabola again. And in the next step, we have to jump back again and so on. And you see that our method will eventually converge, but I take many, many, many different steps until I really end up at our desired minimum. So this is quite an awkward situation. Also, you could do things like, okay, let's just reduce the step size during the optimization. And here we choose the example that we divide by two in every iteration. And we start with an initial step size of 0 0.5. And here you can see if I do that, then we end up not actually at the optimal position, but we kind of get stuck on the way towards the minimum. So also this adaptive step size can have problems and we don't even reach the global minimum. So this would then also imply a too small change in X, but the reason for the too small change is not because we actually have arrived at the minimum, but we simply got stuck because we were reducing the step size in every iteration. There is an idea that expands on this, and this is the so-called backtracking line search. So you see that if we have some position f of x, and this is essentially our parabola where we want to optimize, then I can also take the original position f of x and follow the negative gradient direction. And if I would do that, I would get this green line here. So this is essentially taking the gradient direction and now I'm projecting this on our step direction, which is identical in this case. And you see that if I follow this, I'm essentially getting a line. Now this line, because it's a convex function and I'm following essentially the tangential direction, is always below our graph. Also note that our inner product of the gradient with our update direction is negative in this case, and we are actually having a negative slope because we want to go towards this minimum. So let's see what we can do. Well, one way to approximate this is I could choose some alpha and I multiply essentially the slope with alpha and I choose it in a way that we are essentially above our graph which means that in this case, I have to make this negative value of the slope a little bit smaller, then I don't have an as negative slope. 
and you will see that in this case we find a line that lies at least for a part of our graph above our function. Now if I take this step size alpha rather large then I may find a point that is even behind the minimum and if we are behind the minimum in this case this would then give us the position here. Now you see if I have an appropriate update step what I'm essentially able to do is I can expect that the value of our appropriate update step so a step size of t that essentially is a good update will produce a function value that is below the line indicated in red here. So as long as I have an update that is probably below the red line then I probably have found an appropriate update step. So this then allows us to come up with the following update rules. So I initialize with the function and the search direction delta x. Then I start with a step size of t equals to 1 and I select my alpha somewhere in the domain between 0 and 0.5. Remember we have a negative slope so we want this to be a downscaling of the negative slope such that we lie above the graph and we also set some beta that is somewhere between 0 and 1. And now we essentially compute the update position. So we choose the t with 1. So we take essentially one step for the complete one, one large t, one large step into this update direction. And then I'm checking whether the position is greater than the red line. So then actually the f of x plus alpha times t times the gradient of f of x in a product with this step direction. And if this is the case, so this means I'm lying above the red line, then I probably don't have a very good update. So I do an update of t and there I multiply with beta and now beta is essentially telling us how to shrink the current step and this is essentially the reason why it's called backtracking line search because in every update here then I'm essentially reducing our step size t until I find a solution that lies below the red line. And as soon as I have the position where I'm below the red line then I can output t. Now as a kind of homework you can think about what happens if we are actually not jumping beyond the actual minimum and you will see then also this line search algorithm will find a solution very quickly. Now let's put that into some algorithm for updates. This gives us a gradient descent update algorithm and here we simply choose the search direction as the negative gradient direction and by the way our rule of thumb is the negative gradient is the steepest descent direction. Now let's put this into an algorithm and you see we start with the function f and an initial estimate x0. This could be all zeros or a random initialization. Then we start initializing our k equals to 0 and we set the descent direction that is here now given as the negative gradient direction. Then we do the 1D optimization, the line search with the, uh, for example, Arminio-Goldstein rule. And then we can actually compute the update and receive our new position that is now then x k plus 1 and this is computed from x k plus t k times delta x. We increase the iteration counter and we repeat this until we find an appropriate position which means that the difference between the two x's lies below a certain epsilon. Then we find the output and the output is x k. So this is the result of our optimization. Now this was a first introduction into simple gradient descent methods and line search ideas and we want to continue in the next video and really look into some kind of regularization ideas and how we can combine this with different norms and you will see that 
this then essentially implies a change in the update direction. So I hope you liked this small video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.